Our philosophy is, we like to say home mono, which means like genuine things. So it's something, one of the architects that we often work with said it really well. She said you cut it and cut it and it's still the same thing inside. Um, so, and that also kind of extends to um, just things that age well and have a light footprint. And I think aging well equals light footprint because even if it takes a lot of energy to begin with, um, if you use it for the right amount of time, you just, it made sense, you know. Welcome to Seek Sustainable Japan on Location. I'm JJ Walsh. And in this video, I had the chance to go to Okayama to visit Jonathan Stolenmeyer and see the beautiful renovation that he's done for his business and home out of a hundred year old Japanese house. My name is John Stolmeyer and I'm a carpenter in Okayama doing traditional carpentry um, but also trying to combine that with you know modern uh, technology and uh, amenities that we all would love to have and um, and this is this is my house that finally is unfinished so, so this is the unfinished open house that in Japanese we say Kansei Kengakukai, but I said Mi Kansei because it's totally unfinished. But um, you got to move in at some point. And uh, I've been working on it for two years while working on projects. Um, so it's been a labor. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, going to be nice to finally, you know, have a, a house of our own and family and be able to bring, you know, community around. So. The, this is the original Genkan here, which is why this I put this old ditty back on there. And too bad to have the Noki Goya, which is the original like farm equipment uh, storehouse not used because it's a beautiful space too. So got rid of the entrance here, but um, then we had to do something that you kind you sometimes see with uh, temples that have, you know, the monk living and there's this weird roof system with they kind of combines the two but then we wanted the entrance to still be south facing because that's good fusui or feng shui or whatever um, and then we can kind of go you can go into this wing or you can go into that wing and we can have a main living space and then a space for guests that we also use for living so that's where the Genkan idea came from this side is the old um, no Kigugoya, which is where the farm equipment was. This is the old house. And then I made, uh, we took, these are actually the beams from the uh, floor in the old part of the house that I wanted to change the height a little bit, but also fix the floor structure. But the beams were actually, in, a bunch of them were in amazing shape and like beautiful. So I thought we're gonna reuse these. It, it, this is old pine and the new pine, it's hard to get good stuff, uh, so we don't usually use it, but it was, you know, it, it hasn't, termites haven't eaten it for a hundred years, so I don't think they're gonna <laughs> for the next hundred. And then uh, this is an old uh, part of the of, uh, old column that was much more square, but I just hewed it and put it in and just kind of took a bunch of the old pieces that were still in good shape and was trying to reuse them in fun ways. <laughs> the, the biggest thing is just, you know, we're going to be living in there and it's going to get messy sometimes, but I still want to be able to have a client come and see and talk about their dream for their new home and uh, not uh, be able to experience but not be kind of overwhelmed by the uh, we're living there thing. <laughs> so my wife and I talked and she really likes plaster that is not quite finished with the lime. Uh, she thinks that sort of roughness is beautiful and I do too but I also feel like this white lime plaster is really good for it's got a waterproofing to it you can like touch it it's not gonna flake off so and that part of the process she was like wow that's really beautiful I want to make that the finish sometime, so that's what we, we did here. Um, I'm in the, 
you know, most important wall is also hiding where you can just put your stuff, which is, you know, sort of an American thing. So we'll have hooks on here and then you can, everybody can put their coat on and you won't see it when you come in. When you're in here and in the winter and the summer, what I did, I also made this kind of a, this is a, a how do you call it? It's kind of a, a trap where if you go into a kombini in the beginning, there's that space that doesn't let the hot air and cold air go out as easily. And that's a common thing in uh, Japan in the north too, in like Hokkaido and places like that where you really don't want to lose your warm air. But it's also not a bad idea in general because you save on energy. And so when you first come in, if, we, if it's that time of the year where we need to heat it or cool it, you can have this all shut. And then go to the left, it's kind of the uh, kitchen and uh, guest space, and if you go to the right, it's more the living space. So we reuse these old doors that were on the outside, which was another idea by my wife that was cool. But everything can be reused. They weren't tall enough, so we just did a little joinery down there, yeah. made them a little taller. Uh -huh. um, and these were koshido, so they didn't have, they didn't would, wouldn't stop air movement. So I just put shoji on the back. Nice. which was kind of a fun idea. And then when you come in, you got the kitchen and in the back, living, dining. Um, and the idea is to be able to get people from the community together and do different things um, in here. Uh, even if it's just like all getting together and playing board games or, you know, the more the community can kind of come together and have a meal and I don't know, that was my life in America. My friends and my community, we got together every weekend without question. We were kind of, it just depended on where you were gonna go and what you are gonna do. And you felt so uh, connected and safe. And if you were not doing so well, like people would get it and they would reach out to you in that moment when you came together. And so I'm excited. There's a lot of ways we do that in Japan too, but I'm excited about making that a little bit more personal here too. And it feels like we can because we've got young people and old people who are excited about that too. So the guy who is running that and doing great and going to Tokyo and all over the place, he said the exact same thing. He said, you know, I know this chef who worked in um, Kyoto, but he is living in Okayama now and he would love to like come do a pop-up or something. And I thought, yeah, I don't have to Perfect. cook. Yeah. <laughs> Get everybody together. <laughs> One of the ideas of this uh, building is to just constantly capture the views of all these beautiful farms out there. And also this is the, this is perfectly south. So, you know, tons of light in the living and dining. We're using shoji instead of curtains but you know that's going to be another thermal break where we can you know when we shut all the shoji it's not too bright but you've also got this air in between um, and uh, you I mean I got rid of the engawa because my opinion is that it always becomes just a place where you put stuff <laughs> Because you kind of can't see it, but yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, all these were in here, but we just take those out. We get all this space. Yeah. Um, you know, it feels spacious. We, we, these are the, you know, they're the curtains now. So you don't have to have curtains. Beautiful. And it adds a bit of insulation too, right? Exactly. Because, you know, you've got this, you know, this space in between your exterior doors and here definitely makes a difference. And if it was here, the, the, the common, you know, understanding is that this space adds insulation. But the reality is insulation is often made up of small air spaces. So the, the smaller air, you know, you've got a space, but it's not too big, makes it harder for energy to travel through. So if you can layer those small spaces, you can get a better, uh, you know, effect. So in Japan, of course there's double pane, triple pane, all that sort of stuff. One of the other window systems is like a vacuum system, which is what we use a lot because in order to make the doors not as thick, um, sliding doors and stuff like that, 
to use. You can get as good or better a rating than a double plane window with some of these. Um, and the glass is only 6.7 or 7 millimeters thick, so you can fit it into traditional, but you know. Uh, that said, I, you know, I kept this like crazy fun ninja door where, you know, which is totally not insulated, but just too cool to not have. We call it the party door because you can go like right out to the, right out to the deck out there. And then there's other people who are like all technology. And now there's this big group that's right in the middle and saying like, we can use the technology to, uh, do things in a way that's kind of in, in, you know, influenced by historical permaculture and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, using technology is okay. Like, you don't have to do everything with a hoe, you know what I mean? And that middle ground is where the sweet spot is and where things are going to move, I think, in the, in the future. So or it's, uh, I hewed the floor with an ads, and it's the first time I've ever done this much of a floor like this. Um, but yeah, I just, every morning I woke up and I hewed a couple uh, boards and then went to work and then a couple months later they were all done. The, the irony is there are some uh, machines that kind of are trying to mimic this now, mm -hmm. but it's too uniform. And it's possible to develop a machine that has, you know, non-uniformity, but there probably won't be the demand for that. So when a human does it, you know, it's, you'd go for relatively uniform, but that there's that, I don't know, <laughs> little bit that's not perfect. Mm -hmm. And there's some, it's kind of the same conversation again, but there's something really that touches the heart, I think, about that sort of thing. I love the way it feels under your feet. There's something, I mean, a, you know, flat, like plain surface is nice, but there's something so amazing about a surface that's not flat and I first experienced it and just totally lost it when I was in Kobe in Akashi where there's a home that's nearly more than a thousand years old and it's all of course hewn because they didn't have any planes and over a thousand years the bumps are like disappearing basically because people have walked on it and it's just glistening with you know everybody's and yet because it's not perfectly flat, there's something about your in humanity that you kind of get, you know? You don't walk around in flat places anywhere in nature, and so you kind of, my experience is that. Um, but yeah. You kind of settle into it. Exactly. There's right? something, I, that's my, and a lot of people, that's what they say. They, you know, they come in and take, automatically take their slippers off to be in here and, you know, okay. and feel it. Beautiful. One of the other things that made me really want to do was show uh, the the like stunning human beams that are, you know, kind of ironically always above the ceiling. Oh my God. And so, I mean, this is just this is all not with a chona, not an ads, but an axe. Um, and you know, these are all hundred years old, and they were probably, you know properly cut and dried way before that. I mean, the reality was we had a ton of leaks in the roof because nobody had lived here for 10 years. The tatami had a hole the size of, you know, a 60 centimeter pizza, just like massive. Um, and so the ceiling was obviously damaged. And so that kind of gave me the idea, okay, let's just open this whole space up see these cool, you know, old beams and stuff like that. We put insulation in the ceiling as well. Um, but what's coolest about this space is that this is a perfect example of how to do, how to use what's called the Venturi effect, which is a scientific name, but it's really, the, simply put, it's saying that hot air wants to rise, cool air wants to go down, and you can get almost a suction if you open up uh, windows in the top because air movement up high is usually faster because there's less things for the air to run into, right? So if you open up these windows at the top and then I open up the other windows uh, on the other side that are the same, you get a lot of air movement um, and it will suck up the hot air 
and leave it cooler in this space in the summer. So when it was 37 degrees out and I was even working here, if I opened everything up and opened up these lower windows too, it was totally fine, you know? And that's because we got insulation in the roof and we were using these sort of an intelligent, historical, you know, no energy needed ways to, you know, make it. You gotta put screens and stuff so you don't get destroyed by the bugs, but <laughs> um, yeah, just open it all up and let it, let it flow sort of thing. So, um, and this is the back of the house, so nobody's gonna come like peeking in on us, which I don't even care, but of course, my wife doesn't want to be, uh, you know, peeked at from outside, which makes sense. That's a very cultural thing too, I think. I mean, in the States, we always want to see out and we're not so worried about people seeing us in. And I think they're much more private here, which is a, just a cultural difference. But yeah, so I, you know, this is just an opportunity to sit. And we got the kotatsu and whatnot, people together here, but then I'm gonna work on the garden, which hasn't started yet out there. and you'll be able to see the garden. It's kind of like... Even the green is beautiful. Yeah. And calming. It's like a perfect meditation room. Right. You could do yoga here. You oh, I, I want to do a Zazenkai. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Because, um, you know, that's part of my history is living at a Zen temple in the U.S. for two years um, and kind of running those where everybody came together and we sat in meditation for a month or a week or whatever. So How it'd be... Fantastic. It would be amazing to have people come once a week or whatever and get together and just sit here in silence because uh, there's something super supportive about your practice if you have other people do it with you. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's exactly right. That's the idea. Storage is also important. Yeah, so these guys are just, you know, it's a small little space that we made to be able to put my kids' toys. The other thing is, you know, if we're going to have a meeting there with clients, my kids got all this train set or something out, and they're coming, just going to plop it in here, and then, you know, I mean, people probably wouldn't care, but it's nice to, like, make it tidy and give them an idea of what the kind of, I don't know, canvas is that they're going to work with if they try and do this, that, or the other thing. Of course. And you could so. keep Zabaton in there and right. pull them out. Exactly. The minimalist exactly. clearing away is always a challenge in Japan, Oh my right? goodness, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Don't even get me started about that one. <laughs> and there's a reason Marie Kondo is in America, because she couldn't convince anybody to clear away here. <laughs> this thing, is this really of value to me? Is huge, right? Um, because it also makes you take better care of the things that are of value to you, you know. And that's what I look at when I see these old houses. It's like, this is not something we want to throw out. This is like of value to this, you know, country. No, these are all original. Um, yeah, the... Uh, and then... Stain them or anything? They just I put oil on them. I gave them a little oil love because they were really, uh, you know, they were kind of how do you call it? They've been whited out, sort of. And so I put just a natural um, oil on them that over time will kind of, the, the, the glossy effect will dampen down over time. There's, but. A, there's two products that I really uh, recommend. One is Architectural Egomabra, which it's Perilla oil is what it's called in English. But it's a really, really good, um, there's there's also kind of egoma which is like sesame style but that's for eating it's a different thing you want to get the pearl oil the architectural um, and then the other one that we really like is uh, it's called idoha it's a it's originally a shizen torio so it's like something that you know is not going to harm the environment that you could you know my boss's kids like ran around with it all over their hands putting it on his floor. And, um, you know, supposedly you can eat it, it's mostly vegetable based. And the more we looked into it, it seemed like a really good product. So that's another really one. Because that when you find a good product, like a good oil that you can stain stuff with, or I don't know, yeah, something that just really works. And um, also things that look better with age. Like, oh. And one of the conversations that everybody is interested in is that 
you know, everything's kind of flipped on its head where historically this whole house was built from wood in the mountains in this area, you know, hand sawn by people and it like it says on the um, board that was put up when the house was raised how many how many man hours and days and whatnot to do it all. Well, what you said that really struck me was we're using Japanese wood in Japanese houses because the biggest hurdle that we probably have with the you know community of builders right now is just not using wood from other countries. It's just tons of amazing wood and yet it's it's so expensive that they're taking beautiful like amazing trees and making them into chip and buying not so good wood and then transporting over the ocean which is also not good for the wood and then using that in a building in Japan and you think what is going on here you know yeah. I mean our philosophy is we like to say home mono which means like genuine things so it's something one of the architects that we often work with said it really well. He said you cut it and cut it and it's still the same thing inside. Um, so, and that also kind of extends to um, just things that age well and have a light footprint. And I think aging well equals light footprint because even if it takes a lot of energy to begin with, um, if you use it for the right amount of time, you just, it made sense, you know. If you get it and throw it out really quickly, you're automatically probably spending more energy than you should be. So, um, yeah, that's the that's the basic philosophy, and it's really easy to do. Is the ironic thing, right? Yeah, I mean, my boss and partner Yamamoto, who started this company a year before I came on, um, the whole reason he started it was because he was doing temples and shrines, and then. You know his apprenticeship and his early career doing that and he realized all of a sudden one day why doesn't why aren't the homes being built like this he was like looking at the raisings and stuff of the regular homes and he thought I have no idea what they're doing that doesn't look anything like what I'm doing um, and he thought oh, I need to look into this and so then he started looking into it and he understood the difference and then he found an architect that was concentrating on that sort of stuff and he was given his first project and he just said okay I gotta quit and do homes too um, so we're still doing everything but that's uh, I when I heard his story it was like wow what a cool way of just realization you know looking looking being interested in carpeting carpentry and seeing what are they doing over there that's totally different than what I do why is it totally different sort of thing and then asking the question seeing doesn't have to be totally different, you know, <laughs> which I thought was cool. Don't yeah. get a capture it before it gets messed up, right? Oh my god, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, I got a three year old who loves to throw everything everywhere, so. Following your dad's footsteps. Yeah, right? Learning how to destroy and then hopefully rebuild yeah. after he grows up a bit. And that's part of the process of these houses, too. The demo is the first, like, three months so but yeah let's go I love this window. yeah 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 I mean yeah you gotta love it and then this like huge be is that one tree like yeah. a whole long beam it's called a gagyo and it's you know Oh, when you saw that, you must have been like, yeah, this is a good house to keep. Yeah, yeah, no, it's insane. I mean, it's I think it's 18 meters long, which isn't the biggest one I've seen, but it's still pretty wild. And the whole village brought it up here, apparently, is what the uh, next door neighbor who's 90 years old told me. The wall me. is also a kind of a story. So these, I, these are nice, but these, this room itself is what really my wife really loved. Um, the way that the iron in the wall is coming out and you can see the old little uh, straw pieces. The tokonoma is the, one of the best kind of examples of it. And so we decided to recreate that which is a little bit hard because they don't make the straw in that size anymore. You have to cut it by hand. Um, but the plaster was okay to do that. 
And so these walls someday will start to look like this because... Is it original or is this recreated? That's original, that's original. And then we're trying to shoot for that in the new ones, which that's all, it's all been redone in here. Um, it was, it was, a lot of it was above the ceiling, it was kind of beat up. And, but you can see we've got in the, in this wall now, we've got the same, you know, hand cut uh, straw. And so we're gonna, over time as the uh, iron kind of shows its face for us, we'll get to see it turn into that, which I mean, it's gonna take a long time, but. So is it a plaster mix that has like iron ore, iron dust in it? No, you don't need, you don't need to do that. If you do that, it's like black in <laughs> a year. Um, but you know, it, it depends. I mean, you can, you could do something. We've done that for a client actually, and it was really cool because, you know, in three years, just total color change. But um, yeah, you don't need to do that. There's gonna be iron in the, in the earth to some extent, no matter what. That's because there's a, a piece of wood called a nuki going through there, and it's sucking up the water, on so the it doesn't side. react with the iron. On the other side of the wall. On the inside of the wall. Yeah. Inside of the plaster wall. So those, that's why you see the Nuki, you know, the footprint of that because it's, uh, and it, I mean, in Japan, I think it's beautiful and I think it's beautiful too. It a lot, there's beautiful. a lot of, there are occasional clients who, you know, they're kind of like, why is it so inconsistent? I and wouldn't have that's... known that though. I would have thought something was on top of the wall to make that rubbed off. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. I yeah. wouldn't have thought it's Well, you can see it here wall. too, right? So there's a piece of wood spanning from column to column, which is a structural part, but also a, a part of the wall structure for doing the plaster. Yeah, so it soaks up more water and it doesn't, um, you know, doesn't make the iron come out as much. And there's also less plaster there, so it's gonna have less iron to react, but. That is so cool. How we learn new things when I talk to you? Likewise. Yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of things that we want to do. One is we want people to see materials and feel them in the moment rather than just in a picture, which pictures are amazing too. They're helpful, but, you know, it's nice to see. So, you know, the roof tiles on this are one type of tile. The roof tiles on the other half of the house is another type of tile. The uh, lower roof, which is originally tile, I changed into a, a galvan galvanized steel uh, in one just so that whenever somebody comes they could see that or you know we've got the hewn floor and the not hewn floor and cedar and hinoki and kashi oak and uh so hinoki cypress i'm speaking half japanese now and um, just different types of wood that you can connect with and understand what it really is like um the smells you know all of the uh, sensory things that one wants to get a taste for when you're trying to figure out what you want to do with your own house. Um, the tatami just came in, the tatami smells so great. Yeah, so, but she's just like, it just smells like great wood, you know, cypress and cedar and all these different wonderful smells. And I think that coming from the city, that can be a lot harder to, you know, experience. So I mean, it's, it felt really good yesterday when all these friends and new friends were here and everybody was in the space and enjoying it. And oh, it was amazing. You know, it feels like you were standing at the edge of a canyon and then you just fell sort of thing. Like, or there's this huge emptiness because you've been so um, focused you know, when you're in the bathroom, when you're in the shower. You know, the only time I make a good point of not thinking about work is right before I go to sleep. I think about all the things I'm grateful for that day because that way I can pass out and I sleep like a log. But otherwise, you're constantly thinking, how am I gonna put that together? Or, you know, where am I gonna get this from? Or I need to look that up or whatever, constantly. And then all of a sudden you kind of like, oh, I don't have to do that. And there's this bubble before the next project. And it's almost depressing, to be honest. It, I mean, it's, it's a double, it, it's a very strange thing. So I think it's the bardo in, Tibet, in Tibetan Buddhism, they call, it, they call it the bardo, which is the 
transition period between any one living stage and the next living stage. And in, obviously in Tibetan Buddhism, Buddhism they believe in reincarnation, so it's literally like between this life and the next life. But it's also on a smaller scale too. Like, um, and so just diving into that is good. But it's funny because it's a big lesson because even in carpentry when you're working one day, there are many bardo. So you, you have a task and maybe it's only going to be a four hour task. I mean, sometimes there's much longer ones where you have to do it for um, several days to finish this. But there's often many times where you have a task, it's only a certain amount of time, and then there's stop. And then, especially when you're the head carpenter, what is the next task that needs to be done now? And you're thinking about that before you even get to that bardo stage or that like intermediate stage. But um, to be able to uh, kind of stop and really like, accept stopping in that moment is kind of hard but also really important I think you know so this two days of being able to show this to people I think is really good healing for me or you know therapeutic sort of thing to like stop and just reflect on it with everybody a lot, a lot of stories in here one is my wife wanted tile I'm not a big tile fan uh, I put the tile, I do all the tile and like most of our, I did the tile in the entranceway, I do all that sort of stuff in most of our projects, but mostly just because like, it's hard to do tile um, in a way where you use materials that feel like they can kind of just easily go back to the earth. Because you've got to make it waterproof and you've got to, all that sort of stuff. And this mints are cool too. Yeah, so... I've made a lot of new cabinets uh, for buildings and uh, they're expensive because it's a, mm -hmm. to, to spend the time to do something this well put together, it's a really expensive project. And so, you know, looking online and finding an old one, it took a long time to find something that was in pretty good shape and quite cheap. You know, the things, it's like maybe what, four, it was four or five mon for this cabinet and another one that stack together. Now they're a little bit more expensive I'm seeing. But if I tried to make this, it would be 30 or 40 mod for just this. Wow. Because it's, I mean, you could make it cheaper, don't get me wrong, the same size thing, but the amount of like hand work and it's a really detailed, amazing piece. Mm. And so then just fixing it, you know, like um, getting the rails in and stuff like that, um, and then I put this, uh, made this shelf, which I wanted to take out, but I wonder if it's going to be kind of hard to take out. Um, just kind of putting these little fun details in, you know, like dovetail joinery on this little oh, nice. shelf. Nobody's going to notice that. <laughs> you know it's there. Well, <laughs> to be honest, it was a couple of things. One, it was, um, I have done that sort of thing myself a lot, but the, one of the guys I was working with, who I love dearly, and he's a great carpenter, he'd never done them. Uh -huh. And I was like, well, why don't you try it? You know, which, uh, so that kind of story too. But yeah, so that, you know, I thought, this worked out great, and then just getting a nice piece of wood, planing it, kind of making the shelf. The sink itself I had made by a client whose home we built, who's a ceramic artist. You don't notice it but at first, but the, these sort of angelic mermaid things are carrying plane and a chona, an adze, oh, and no, an axe, really? and a chisel, I and a sashigane. I would never have noticed that. I didn't notice it until I like put it in the end. I had seen it and then measured it and all this stuff and then I put it in the space and I looked at it and I was like, holy smokes, they got all the carpentry tools. That's well, we can just open the pantry. So this is another American thing. Uh, it's a pantry. So for food. <laughs> no, he has a pantry. So like, what you want to use to make your whatever right now is over there and then stuff that you're not going to need right away. That's a great idea because usually people just fill this area with storage mm -hmm. 
and then right. it gets right. all cluttered, right. right? Particularly with food. So just keep it all in one place. I love that. Idea. I mean, it's my mom's influence. She had, she always had a pantry, whether it was big or small, and like the kids yeah. can go in and snack. I and would love to have a pantry. Yeah. I'd like to redo the well so we have water. If the, in, a, in the event of some crisis, you know, people who kind of are out of luck maybe in this area could come and we could have enough like food left over and water and then if the solar panels are still working we could maybe have electricity and just some things like that that you know it could be I mean that's what old temples used to be in Japan was literally like the place where you could take refuge in the event of emergencies that's why they're on the mountains that's why they have a big room a huge tatami room that was one of their um, purposes actually um, but that's not around so much anymore right so careful and watch your head because it's this is like the trapdoor room <laughs> literally there, there's oh, yeah, a trap door there. Like, yeah yeah so dirt. that's the that's what a bunch of it was and still is and I haven't cleaned the beams up here. Like if I could sit here and 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 do some computer work, it wouldn't, wouldn't be the, too bad, um, you know. And you added a screen, which is very rare to find in Japanese houses. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if I had the money, and someday I'll make them all out of wood. But for now, it's just you gotta have a uh, little bug protection. What a beautiful area and they haven't harvested the rice quite yet. Yeah, not all of the, there's, it's actually very little, but it's mostly done by one or two guys and I think they're getting ready to harvest it real soon. So, and actually I own one of the fields, but the people around here kind of all, uh, I mean I could do it myself if I wanted, but this group who uh, does it for a living, they, we have a, deal that they kind of do it and I don't have to do any uh, grass cutting um, and they get to you know make a living off of it which is fine because I would don't want that to go away yeah. mm -hmm. and this really pulls the air up and out in the summer mm -hmm. um, so I want to leave that but I guess someday I'll make a floor here but I'm just kind of <laughs> exhausted <laughs> And it's, I, I say, I say that because this would be kind of a, a complicated process to make a floor because it's not, you know, not easy. Uh, so yeah, right now I just gonna leave it like this. For yeah, a this was originally straw and then mud on it. Okay. And so I had to go up there and throw all of the mud out and then all the straw and it's just like leaking all over the place. I mean you can still see now. Yeah, yeah. You can still see where the mud is kind of like falling through and stuff. But and that was old insulation slash like keeping stuff out, but um so I wanted to mimic the straw again. Mm -hmm. Um and these uh they're called yakisudare, so they're kind of like uh smoked, which means they're not gonna attract uh uh, insects as well and it's just kind of an easy way to make a layer and then put a bunch of wool insulation up there. Particularly so. in the summer you want this barrier because the roof heat would just cook the space mm. so if you've got a good barrier right at the um, roof uh, it, it makes a big difference so you know sheep's wool. Oh awesome! Yeah so more natural style of insulation, right? Instead yeah, of the, yeah. The typical, what's it used now, like styrofoam type material? Yeah, the styrofoam, I mean this is awesome because it doesn't like, it's not like fiberglass insulation that makes you want to kill yourself after you've worked with it because it's chick like these little pricklies all through your skin. Oh, yeah. um, it has a quite a good R rating, especially if you get like the 100 uh, thickness or whatever, 200 you thickness. From New Zealand? It comes from New Zealand, um, other places too, but mostly New Zealand. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it has a really low um, energy cost to make, uh, which is awesome. Um, I mean, there's complicated thoughts about the poor sheep and stuff like that. You don't have to kill them, but how well they're be tre being treated and stuff like that. But there's also, in my opinion, more complicated thoughts about a bunch of plastic styrofoam all over my building. And it's, 
it's anti-insect, anti, it's, it's got a, quite a bit of a fireproof wool. It doesn't uh, like go up in golf and flames. It kind of burns and sizzle. Um, so there's a lot of like just natural characteristics to wool that make it a good idea for a building material. It's amazing. Um, and it's been used for centuries in all log houses, like, you know, stuffing it in between cracks and stuff like that. Building material uh, makes sense. It's an amazing building material. Mm -hmm. cool. And so my, my boss is always like, you don't actually need insulation. He's like, you can live there, you know, like we, but we've both yeah. done it. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I get it, but <laughs> if I put insulation in the floor and insulation in the roof, uh, we in particular don't insulate the walls as much because we want to keep it traditional plaster walls. If you have a exterior cladding, you can insulate between that intelligently, but it's like enough. So the east wing is our little more comfy home space. Originally, the a space for the. Um, tools for farming. Yeah, so it's low ceilings. We put this floor in, there was no floor and obviously it was all just earth floor at the time. Um, but uh, comfy. Uh, I told my wife when I was talking about the height of this floor and trying to you know, make it the same height as that part over there, um, that it would be comfy. And she was like, I feel like it's gonna be too much kind of apakukan pressure. But then she, you know, came in and she was like, yeah, this is comfy, you know, it's nice. Which I Originally, this was the little room for um, the person who would help with the, uh, um, and so th this, this was a livable room, but it's, it's the only place that had a floor. So there was no floor in here. This wall was not, there was a wall there. And you came in from here, and it was just like your one room little dormitory while you're helping. And so that's why this is like super low. But um, it was the only way I could get, because there's another room below this. So I couldn't, t I couldn't take it any, make it any lower. Right. Because I would destroy that sort of cellar what space. what do you use for the room below? Is storage? Haven't done anything. It's just a cellar. Um, but the crazy idea that I've got right now is to someday make it into like an onsen. Beautiful closet you've made. Yeah, we, oh I was going to leave a bunch of it more original, but uh, then I was thinking about my wife and her wanting to put her oh, clothes and stuff in. And I thought, yeah. okay, I'm going to kind of redo that but and the this part's original maybe yeah yeah and that's a floor to another small room oh, above wow. and then this is new this is new yeah to make it a bit higher um i wanted to put insulation in here mm -hmm. so i put insulation in and, and took the it was originally just the roof right there so i put insulation in and brought uh these boards down for that um which I think that sort of thing will make a difference. So. Yeah, sure. And the view is amazing. Yeah, and you can see we're gonna. I think this is this is the only place that I have kind of conceded to have curtains because it's an amazing view. But it'll also be important for my wife to yeah, yeah not have to worry. Do you take out all these hooks that they've put in over time? Yeah. You know, or do you just kind of leave them and maybe use them at some is point? That original nail. Yeah, I mean, like, look. And a hook. Yeah. yeah, some of that stuff, it'll want to go eventually, but it's kind of like, I'm in that, yeah, again, that intermittent space where you're kind of like, well, maybe those guys want to live there for a little while longer. We might have. We could take out this wall and get a stairs, and then, like, that lower room could be the bath, and you don't have to go outside to get to the bath. So someday that would be really cool. Yeah, with a view of the best yeah. view. Yeah, right? and view, and you could like come up here and then spend a little time on this uh, out, outside oh. deck. So let me show you the uh, little deck out here for okay. uh, for uh, clothes hanging slash sort of. Um, oh, that's nice. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect for hanging clothes outside. That's yeah. often an afterthought of a lot of houses, mm. and it's oh, it's in front of the house and it kind of mm. blocks the view. Right. This is beautiful. Yeah. 
So she's got this hook oh, nice. to bar, you know, it'll be the washer and then she can kind of put it all on here and then bring that out. And oh, good. So she wanted that. I mean, it was cool to talk to her about some of that stuff and learn her ideas for methods or whatever. And then this building, um, in order to get a unit bath in there, which I like unit baths because they're good for the building. You can use it for hopefully 20 plus years or 30 years and then you could actually take it out and put another one in so um, but that in order to make not cut these beams which extend over there had to lower this all which is kind of fun until I'm 70 and then it won't be as fun. <laughs> the step down. Yeah I like mezzanines <laughs> but um, oh, yeah. It's some nice natural light. Yeah and I wanted to be able to like open up and you know I want to. I wouldn't love to be able to look out there. I'm going to work on that um, chikuri, which is like the bamboo forest, uh, with a guy actually here who's one of his things is making them more healthy, but also obviously be more beautiful when they're kind of thinned out. And so cool. So that would be cool to like be able to look out your bath yeah. at the bamboo forest sort of thing. We made one more bathroom over here. Okay. Um, and reuse the old toilet because it was still in good shape okay. and uh, did the, took the top so it's kind of the same as the other but the piece the furniture piece is the top of a two-part miziatansu instead of the bottom but the idea is that you know if, a, if people come over to stay and everybody's over there having a good time and you're like I want to go to bed you go over to the east wing if you, even if you're the guest if you're us, we go to that our room and you've got your bath you can take and you don't have to, you know, feel like you're exposed and you got your own bathroom and then the second floor is the guest room uh, for staying. This is the old, old wall. Very cool. And this is the same thing happening with the wood behind the Exactly. Yeah, this is like a lot more iron in the soil too, huh? Beautiful. Look at those curved beams. Right? You gotta save those. Oh, amazing. And then the back here is like storage, right? For yeah. You can kind of see the difference here. The beams in here, I didn't give a little oil yet. Mm -hmm. um, oh, so it's a bit drier. Yeah, kind of whited out. And oh my gosh, look at those beams. Yeah, you you must have seen all of these beams and been like, yep, this is staying. Yep. Also, just like I've, I've done these beams, I know how hard it is, like how much work it is. I mean, I hew, like I've been hewing with an axe for, you know, almost 10 years now and I know how hard it is to do that and it's like it's so much work to get this beautiful thing so and this is freehand yeah axe here right yeah yeah that's incredible it's pretty wild huh beautiful all the curvy wood which you cannot buy like we go to buy rounds because then because we can mill it at our shop with and use that um, and it's it can be cheaper to go buy rounds at the market or whatever But you cannot buy a curvy piece of wood because they can't sell it So what's interesting is you go and there's a piece of wood, you know 18 meters long round and It says magari which means like curved and you're thinking what about this piece of wood is curved? but when they sell it to you know wood manufacturers any little bit of curve on that long straight means less wood and harder to you know mill correctly so that's become the curved wood but really it's these crazy wonky beams that you know can be used appropriately and make the building even stronger in some cases and just are so cool and historically it was the other way around making something you know square and whatnot was really hard to do um, so it's kind of flipped on its head and it's interesting that uh, that's how you see it now and you, you know, it's just all the price flips right on its head because now working with a wonky beam takes a lot of skill to lay out and cut the frame right and we don't have machines that can do that now. 
you never find anymore in Japan, right? No, you can't buy them. You gotta go get, you have to go literally get them out of the forest yourself. So, we'll have to do some of that too, but. Yeah, yeah this is another thing, and this is a little thing, but like, I put tons of Konsento in. Yeah, I saw that. Because when, because when the guests come, like, what if you're, what if you're eight or ten people here, you know, doing a zakone or something? Like, everybody wants their own oh, little konsento for their phone, right? That's something the builders and remodelers always say is impossible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't put in more konsent, yeah, yeah. You know, more electricity. Yeah. Of you're like more, give me more. But yeah, I mean. Well, thank you so much for the tour. That's awesome. My pleasure. Yeah. yeah. So thanks everybody for coming around and seeing the new home and um, yeah I mean get in touch if one of the things we would love to do is be if if you're interested in this sort of thing to be there before you buy the house because then we can find a great candidate for you to fix up at a you know cheaper and faster and still so that's yeah that's something that we'd like to try and get out uh, is for people to understand that we'd be willing to help you look because uh, that was one of the best things for me. I was able. I was. I go to the house, and I'm not doing anything but climbing under the floor and going into the ceiling to see if the thing's in good shape, you know. Um, and I don't think that's what norm normal people do. But <laughs> but yeah. So new building is uh, um, is absolutely fantastic, and for the carpenter, really easy. <laughs> compared to, I mean, it's not really easy, but it feels really easy compared to um, performing the surgery on old buildings. I, if I tried to build this building new with all this amazing materials, it would cost, it would have cost four to five times what I was able to do it for. And so, you know, it's a toss up, like what are you interested in? Um, do you want it to be new or do you, do you like the new and the old together, so. And we can also build, we can also rebuild Kominka um, in a whole new place. Uh, we can also make it look much more like it was all old, you know, or try and, you know, it, there's so many possibilities with these buildings, just like help us save their beauty. <laughs> but, yeah, you can send us an email, you can get in touch with me on Facebook, on Instagram. Um, look forward to hearing from you. Awesome. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thanks for joining Seek Sustainable Japan on location. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, join as a member to support more videos like this, and get in touch with me or John if you have any questions or comments. We'd love to hear from you. Have a great day. Take care.